Hello and welcome everybody to the first digital seminar from Wacom for Developers. My name is Jörg Brandt from Wacom and I'm your host for today's session. Most of you will already know Wacom for its pen tablets and pen displays. But besides that, our technology is featured in certain smartphones, tablets and convertible PCs. And we support businesses and developers around the world to digitize workflows with digital ink. Whether it's handwritten notes, filling forms, or securing legally binding signatures. Digital Ink can make it all possible. We combine all our tools for Digital Ink in the Wacom Ink Technologies. Today we will have a closer look on the concept of Digital Ink and we will introduce two powerful tools, the Will SDK for Ink and the Universal Ink Model. To do so, I have invited a very special guest, one of our inking experts. So please give a warm welcome to my colleague, Timothy Bacher for his speech, Wacom Ink Technologies as Driver for Digital Transformation. So let's kick it. Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Timothy. I am a product manager at Wacom. And today we're going to talk about Digital Ink and Will3. And before going into details and explain what Will really is and what Will stands for, let's take a closer look at what Ink represents. So in order to kick off this session, I would like you, as a viewer, to reflect from a personal experience on the use of ink in your daily life as an individual, but also in your business routines. I would like you to think about how you perceive ink from past personal experiences versus nowadays. And whether you're a parent assisting your child through education and its challenges, such as homeschooling. Whether you're a creative person and working with a pen has always been a natural process to you. Or even whether you end up writing on a whiteboard at work when presenting something to your colleagues and sharing with them simple concepts and simply ideas you have as an individual and you realize writing something is always the most natural and fastest way to transcribe your thoughts efficiently. So ink has always been in our lives from ancient times to nowadays. It has always been a key factor of our evolution an instrument to our knowledge, the knowledge that you learn, you as a child, growing up, developing yourself, developing skills and going to school to be part of our society. But more importantly, ink being the complementary part of a pen, and in essence, what it really is, is that it is part of a process. A process which we really can connect with the acts of creating and sharing knowledge. Let's take the example of a child going into the process of learning. Children represent the society of tomorrow. Therefore, looking at pen and ink is looking at the instruments to a process where knowledge and process are evolving and are in essence the key factors to our children becoming the people of tomorrow's society. So within this process, at a very early stage, a child uses ink to describe his or her world. They would grab a pen and then naturally trigger this process of sharing what they want to say or what they have in mind. And if you think about it, it is so natural that they are the ones picking up the colors, the paper or whatever the support they have. They are the ones picking up the size of the pen by choosing the pen they liked and even come up with their own way to hold their pen 
and apply contents as they would draw progressively. So there is a natural process of selecting the artifacts. Therefore, they naturally find a way to describe us their thoughts. Later on, they would go to school. The process here becomes different as the situation is flipped where we use ink to help them understand the world better. And this teaching process and the relation which the child holds with the pen and ink changes progressively through the years depending on their age, the learning material, the school system, the society, and the culture we live in. All of this makes the use of ink very unique. And by unique, there are thousands of ways to explore the use of ink. Ink creates content, content marks a surface, and the surface creates an environment. This is in the same environment where culture shapes language and typography by creating a writing process specific to its surroundings. Part of us may see the act of writing restricted to what we've experienced from the place we live in, like from a Western perspective. But the different patterns are endless in terms of perceiving how to create content on a surface. Some processes use cursive writing and some use print writing. Some languages use clear, contrasting vertical and horizontal strokes, as opposed to blocks of letters with rounded forms. Some consume the empty space differently, as we would do in our own language, but rather use enough empty space to mark a clear separation between characters, where characters refer to IDs and not sounds. Some writing processes use ancient techniques and some processes even use ornamental elements which lets acquire a sense of harmony and balance. Some use different reading patterns where the eye does not browse a text the same way, whether it's left to right, right to left or even top to bottom. So the use of ink is unique. Ink creates content where content marks a surface and the surface creates an environment shaped by the culture and the society we live in and evolve. Now that we have talked about what ink represents and the way we explore it is unique, let's move on and talk about digital ink and how we, as individuals, apprehend it with the digital world. Let's start with the main reasons why digital ink is significant and why nowadays we are at a crossroads. The first reason and aspect refers to habits created out of the digital transformation process here we are referring to habits created from touch typing versus handwriting. For most of us, we've been raised in a way that we've learned to use a pen way before even learning to type on a keyboard or on a smartphone. And basically in order to write something to interact with any of the devices that now are casual and make our daily life. What is significant about that is that technology has entered our lives so fast that we have not even realized how fast this happened. But looking how fast this happened, and that basically technology is everywhere, have you ever wondered how the next generation would simply learn to write something on the first place? 
Let's take a closer look at the differences involved speaking of using a pen and using a keyboard. Whether using one single hand to work with a pen or two hands to work with a keyboard, they actually do not create and trigger these same cognitive processes. Pens and keyboards bring into play very different cognitive processes. Handwriting is a complex task, which requires various skills. With handwriting, we train the muscle memory, and by consequence, typing does not involve the same skills. One example is when looking for the spelling of a word, we have the reflex to reproduce the gesture and to write it down. When typing on a keyboard, all the letters are represented, or let's say suggested, in the same way or similar way, and will be translated by the computer using a standard gesture by pressing on a key. It is about visualizing where the letter is on the keyboard. Therefore, the gesture has no connection with the shape of the letter, unlike handwriting. For handwriting, this is a muscle exercise where a child needs to hold the pen while moving in such a way as to leave a certain pressure at different points of each letter. And the child learns words as segments or blocks of letters, which contributes with the learning process of spelling. And of course, some languages use more complex spelling than others. Computer writing is a response to a flow of thoughts, while handwriting is a highest form of abstract thinking. Applying handwriting content engage you to think the whole and triggers abstract reasoning. With touch typing, one may erase at any point, whereas here with handwriting you think and visualize the whole and connect the dots at a higher level. There is a broader perspective really, because the process and how to achieve the goals behind this process is different. We have mentioned that we are at the crossroads, so it is about putting perspective on the digital transformation process, which happens now compared to reasoning and skills built out of gestures and habits, which have been here for a very, very long time. Another reason and aspect a response to the concerns about the environment. We want to limit our environment footprints, which involves making eco-friendly choices and using smart solutions to minimize the environmental impact. First thing to pop in mind is paper stocks and the industry, but also is to be considered chemicals and the manufacturing processes. They are a consideration as to the ingredients used in the whole process. Creating paper stocks, preventing paper from curving, but also the mentality in relation with cheap, disposable objects. So digital transformation is more than a process, and digital ink is an opportunity. So from Digital Inc, we have talked about how digital transformation and digital really joins Inc and what it represents. We now reach Wheel 3, briefly mentioned at the start of the session. So what is behind Wheel 3.0? First, about the term itself, a Wheel stands for Wacom Inc layer language on one side where 3.0 on the other refers to its latest version, its third version and describe the new generation of this product. Because Will 3 is built on a vision first of all, 
and this vision brought foundations and improvements in order to suggest potentials, which we will cover very shortly. Before to start exposing facts and figures, first let's just break down Will as a name, as a label. So Wacom Ink Layer Language. And you first notice the company name, Wacom, of course, which is very important and significant in order to even understand and capture the philosophy behind the wheel technology as well. In Wacom's name, you can find WA, which is a fundamental concept and derives from traditional values in Japan and is usually translated as harmony in English, whose ideal is to integrate individuals for the harmony and balance of the group and implies constant peaceful continuity within a community and therefore is the aesthetic and core value which drives us and encourages to foster a strong association with the community and serve the society. So will is actually a core technology and it is before anything else a vision and a contribution to the continuous process of digital transformation with a core focus on content creators and the integration of digital ink into the digital space. And by space, here again, we refer to conceptual environment first. So what ink makes value to you, but we also refer to logical environments as well, operational systems, platforms, you name it. It is the results of research to explore data to capture and deliver an experience into the digital space. It characterizes a certain level of technology exploration so that the seamless experience delivered accommodates everyone and so that the experience can be tailored to anyone's goal. In more practical terms, and for our developers out there, Will is a set of SDKs. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. They represent the logical instruments which allow any content creator to develop value into one's application. Again, here there is a vision to provide a certain knowledge so that the content creator molds it into a value, an application which contributes to his or her own projects. So it's about providing a level of freedom and a content creator customizes shapes, molds it into something greater with higher goals. It is very powerful and was thought through to enable a certain reflection and creativity to accommodate one's project goals. First, it all starts with working with data. And by working with data, it's about translating the analog experience, analog experience of grabbing a pen and applying content. So to reproduce a gesture and basically bring an experience into the digital space is to work with data captured into the digital space. Think data. That is the door, the entrance to the digital experience. To bring an experience to the digital space is to seize the parameters which are significant to the real world experience and create the feeling of analog writing and understand and express those same parameters in the digital environment. Before we go into some of those parameters, note that this feeling of writing is one of the main purpose and really one of the key to the SDK solution and how it is designed which is bring the experience into the digital space and serve the community. Therefore, to think data is one of the fundamental efforts which led to the design of the wheel solution. To illustrate the level of complexity involved, let's take the following example. Pressure, tilt, rotation, speed, all of these physical parameters combined help to create a set of data which reproduce an object in movement and its evolution in a given environment. 
delivering the data sets in a given space implies to commit with the accuracy of it, to consume this data, and to foster its processing to help and to contribute to the rendering process. Here again, the fundamentals behind the technology itself includes a customizable part which allows to work on configuration of various types, working with variables which contribute to the effect of specific writing implements, pen, pencil, different type of brushes and so forth, and basically custom the material which would have applied the ink itself. And then comes the ink texture. The texture itself comes from the combination of writing implement and the material we apply it to. But more importantly, texture represents the starting point for a use case. Depending on the languages, the stress on the different points of a stroke and the effects added to it has a different meaning. So bringing an experience into the digital space is to enable a use case and by enabling this use case within the wheel technology we let the experiencer master it in a way that it becomes natural and there is a seamless transition from the analog experience really one of our fundamentals is to have the experiencer thanks to the wheel technology to tailor his or her own writing experience and perform the right value transition to their eyes into the digital space. Now we come to the point that the digital experience goes beyond when you apply content because you now work with data which you classify per se and push this data to a digital instance you enable a certain aspect on this digital instance, which is you create a playground and you enable manipulation of data along with it. Therefore, you open the door to the use of data. To give some simple example, if you write something on a paper, uh, you would need to erase in order to apply corrections or you would need another paper. Whereas here you get an endless aspect of progressive work on an object situated in a digital instance. Therefore, the writing object you're working on becomes endless and can now be seen from new angles. You open the door to endless creation process. Because we have mentioned manipulation of data, even data to classify as fundamentals and reason of why digital experience goes beyond traditional writing on top of endless creation process. Let's talk about one of the core aspects behind the wheel three curtains, really. It is about classifying, storing, structuring the data. So you may ask why? Right, if you have no use case in mind right now, you would ask why should we be interested in storing and structuring sensor and capture data really? So let's put it this way. Think data, but think metadata really. That is the door to artificial intelligence. Why? Because simply you enable post scenarios, you set a stage, you enable options, interactions, so first example to pop in mind is that you share your contents no matter where you are how that happens this regarding the conditions really you are in you make your content accessible in the digital times with remote education challenges we can all agree that this is a key aspect of succeeding and putting all the chances we have on our site Again, think data, but metadata. When you think data and metadata, an enormous amount of possibilities becomes available. So remote collaboration, what else? You said the stage we said, right? So the same stage serves artificial intelligence purposes, data recognition. You make data exposable for recognition engines, language, but semantic really 
the study of relationship with words and absolute meaning we would draw from words so really it is to make it exposable to the study of meaning and references and by doing this we provide a format to basically train an engine to work on the study of words sentences and units of data therefore this vision of structuring the data led to the creation of the universal ink model the universal ink model could be depicted as the tree of information which represents the mold and a structure standardized for data but we mentioned semantic this actually goes beyond and the study of references with languages in digital times this is recognitions in the general terms math science or anything which makes sense to a school program and a study process really imagine that any input no matter where you are how you do it with a touch input on a screen a stylus in your hand leads to an automated recognition engine imagine how trained engines contribute to the development of knowledge it makes the knowledge accessible everywhere at any time it's as simple as that anywhere at any time Now that we have talked about all this, it is time for you to discover on your own the potential that you need based on the resources that we have available for you, which will help you and assist you to create a specific knowledge and understanding in order to bring value in your projects, in your ideas, your initiatives. Therefore, to pursue this, we invite you all to go to our site where you'll find sections dedicated to the ink technologies. And since we have talked about will as a pillar of our technology, you will get facts and figures as we have covered, but you also get references to more in-depth knowledge concerning the different technical artifacts to build better technical understanding from the different angles. This page will lead you to the different references that you will need in order to start building on your side. First section will get you to the different SDKs. We have talked about the wheel technology, so you will find the different SDKs for ink for the different platforms which you can download, Windows, Web, Android, iOS, but you also find the references to the other SDKs and technologies available. You have reference to the resources available in terms of documentation, very significant one. And another one for the samples, which will redirect you to our page on GitHub and basically allow you to consume some sample codes prepared in order to bring some guidance. Another one will redirect you to the web demos and of course, a link to our support leading to the creation of tickets which will be sent to our teams accessing our documentation will provide you with technical artifacts technology wise reading guidance data and parameters descriptions platforms availability of the libraries geometry pipeline vectoring and rastering you have a section dedicated to the universal ink model and coding related details guidance overall practices in general terms and basically technology facts from engineering angles exposed to a general technical audience so the technology is out there right at the corner it's not only about the what this technology has to offer Remember, it has a strong focus on the how you want to work with ink. Again, you're all invited to realize the potential you need and bring this value in your projects. Do not forget to visit our site and get familiar with our different resources and start building with us. Hey, hey here we're back again. Thank you, Timothy, for your presentation. What I really liked was the different writing languages. Did you make those up by yourself or did you pull them somewhere from the internet? 
Yeah, I, actually, I, I did manage Python myself. I mean, actually, I love learning foreign languages. Uh -huh. uh, but the point really was to show if we can express all those things using our technology. You know? uh -huh. did, uh, so, uh, and how did you do that? Did you use, uh, what application did you use? I was, uh, for those ones, I was actually using Wacom Notes. Uh, mm -hmm. I was basically using some of my uh, different knowledge I have from different languages. Yeah. Oh, cool. It was looking good and, and I'm, I'm impressed. So, I mean, so we have roughly kind of 10, 15 minutes left. So let's open up the floor for a couple of questions. Um, to everyone's kind of watching us at the moment. So if you don't have, uh, if you haven't done that already, please, uh, if you have a question, put that in the chat and we will be here to answer it. Um, so let's let's check or let, let's give it a minute. So let's start with another question. I put. Um, so digital ink can support numerous use cases. Um, in which field do you see the most potential for developers, Tim? Uh, that's that's a very good uh, question, actually. Uh, I will answer it uh, in different ways. So from a product manager standpoint, and as a product grow, really, from the implementation perspective, I see great potential in diversified use cases, basically not targeting specific segments, mm -hmm. uh, just because simply the solution is tailored to different tastes, which is a point I wanted to make during this presentation. And we want to serve really purposes and not one purpose, mm -hmm. uh, but study the product standpoint really. Our division brought together on a personal level and how I see it as an individual is I see great potential today in education, of course, because we've been experiencing the whole year totally differently. I mean, uh, in our audience, we have, we are parents probably, we have uh, young kids, we've been observing the challenges to remote education. So to me, education, pen and ink brought together are the instruments to, to the development of our children. So the potential to develop is really to uh, go after solutions for remote education. Yeah, I hear you totally. I mean, looking at my kids at home, the two boys kind of, it's, it's, it really kind of needs some more handwriting and, and some more digitization of, of workflows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, shall we look if there's a question? Uh, give me a sec. Sure. Um, Okay, here's one. Uh, I want to start with Digital Inc. How to do this? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, so before we start anything which is application related, because uh, we made a point, right? SDK is just within an application. Uh, it all starts with ideas and, and concepts, right? So whether you're a developer or a project manager, an application uh, a user, really, a teacher, a student, doesn't matter, actually will drive ideas and those ideas create uh, concepts and potentially a project and a process which is associated to it, right? So this is where our resources at this precise moment would contribute, uh, but we will also be thrilled actually to learn about those ideas at the stage they are developed. So I would say reach out to us and share your ideas we're part of a community at the end, so we pursue to shape and build solutions as a group. Okay, there's there's a second one from Peter. Um, what are the benefits of will over other ink SDKs? Yeah, that's good good comments. Uh, will really is positioned as this kind of agnostic technology, meaning that we have this uh, cross-platform aspect that uh, is difficult to find actually somewhere else. So really at uh, this natural ready, expressing ready into the digital space uh, is something which is uh, very good uh, in our, our technology, but also because uh, people will be looking for those cross platform, cross devices, looking for different kind of inputs really, uh, because we're working with so much technologies. It could be a mouse, it could, it could be uh, touch typing, whatever, a pen, stylus, whatever. Everything is combined, making Will really agnostic, but also accepting all these parameters. So Will is positioned in a way where if uh, you would need to basically start from scratch. Whereas here we're exposing a potential you can use at your own taste and develop on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, there's another one from the audience. Um, are there any competitions or online bootcamp community events plan for digital ink. So uh, I think this is a small one for me. So um, of course, guys, um, we're working on this. 
and uh, please stay tuned. So the best to stay up to date with Digital Inc. is following our Welcome for Developers channels on both LinkedIn and Twitter. And if there is something uh, coming your way, of course, you can check that. Okay. There's even another one. Okay. We keep it going, guys. So what is the future of Digital Inc.? Um, Wacom Inc. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's frame it well because uh, basically this is the product I'm, I'm driving, and it's a very good question actually. Uh, so first, I, I don't see the technology as something which which is static. Uh, basically, even though will is a noun and it could sound odd, really, but really it's a verb from a visionary angle, if we can say it this way, because it links to the environments and it needs to adapt to the changes involved in those environments, which we have to accommodate to, right? So to push to the next level, we have said that metadata is the next level and explore the way we explore metadata and build knowledge on top of it. One of the next level would be to push to a different kind of environments uh, we're subject to, for example, cross reality. XR, for example, and break ink into the space surrounding us, uh, allowing gesture and you know our 3D space to express basically. That's that's mm -hmm. one good example that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Okay, there's one other to come. So do you also support Linux as a platform? I could not find it on GitHub uh, on your developers page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this. good comments. Yes. Oh. Uh, so in terms of uh, different implementations, uh, you are all invited to go to our different resources. Currently, we're uh, talking about Windows, uh, Web, Androids, and iOS. But that's a very good comment, and uh, we're always open to discuss the implementations. So that's a very good point. Thank you. OK. So um, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, seems like not. Okay, so um, basically that's it for now, guys. So really enjoyed it here. And thank you, Tim, for taking the time. It was really fun talking to you and, and getting your views on Digital Inc. So uh, to everyone else, thank you for attending in this digital seminar and your interest in our products. If you haven't done already, and we've mentioned it a couple of times already, please go to our website, developer.wacom.com. You can also find us on GitHub, mentioned that already, so a tick in the box again. And um, also said kind of to stay up to date with us uh, with about Digital Inc. and our Welcome for Developers uh, uh, channel on, oh, damn it. Okay, let's, let, so just follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Look for Welcome for Developers and we're fine. If you've got a very detailed questions, of course, you can also drop us an email, willdevelopers at welcome.com. And the good news is, if you haven't had a chance to write everything down so far, look at the description down there, and there's everything listed that I've just mentioned. So thank you all for your time. Looking forward to speak to you soon, and uh, have a great, great uh, rest of the day. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.